What was being feared for many months has finally become a reality. The tariff war has indeed kicked off. U.S.'s tariffs on Chinese products worth $34 billion came into effect today. Beijing immediately retaliated, imposing higher tariffs on U.S. goods worth $34 billion. But the war doesn't end here. U.S. President Donald Trump has announced that tariffs on additional $16 billion worth of Chinese goods are set to take effect in two weeks. That's not all. The hostilities could intensify further as Trump has threatened to impose higher tariffs on Chinese goods worth $500 billion if Beijing continues to retaliate and not yield to the U.S.'s demands. How will this spiraling dispute between the two countries impact other countries like India? Joining us now to discuss this further is Song Zhang, Washington Bureau Chief of Ben Hu Daily and Harsh Pant of the Observer Research Foundation. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here. Uh, Harsh, let me start by asking you, uh, you know, what do you make of uh, what we've now seen is the start of the trade war? So far, uh, most people have been hoping that both China and the U.S. would pull back, that a middle ground would be arrived at. But now that doesn't seem like a possibility. It, looked li it l now does seem like both sides are all in. Uh, yes, I think uh, it's quite likely now that this will escalate uh, because the Chinese have already uh, retaliated. And I think the next uh, level of retaliation from Mr. Trump is going to be there, as he has indicated in a, in, in a rally. Um, he, in fact, intends to take it up all the way to $500 billion worth of trade. So I think there is a larger dynamic being played here where his concerns, or at least the Trump administration's concerns about intellectual property, about the bilateral surplus growing uh, with mm. vis a vis China, I think all of them have coalesced into this major argument that politically for him it's unsustainable if he does not take these decisions. So I think the politics and economics of this for Mr. Trump makes sense. It may not make sense uh, for the rest of the world. Uh, and I think now that the Chinese have retaliated, mm. we are all waiting to hear 16 weeks down the line what Mr. Uh, what Mr. Trump does. So I think we are we are on an escalation ladder, uh, and I think all the countries around the world uh, had hoped in the past that this that this would not come to this. It had come to this. I think everyone is hoping now that it would not escalate. But I, I think it's very unlikely um, in the short term that this would find a modus that the, the two sides would find a modus vivendi. So I'm very doubtful if we can uh, we can contain that uh, over the next 16 or uh, 15 yeah. weeks that we have for the next round of retaliation. When would you agree with that assessment that, uh, uh, that it's unlikely that we are now going to see a pullback from where we stand today and this is now going to spiral into more escalation? I uh, uh, agree with uh, another panelist. And actually, uh, we know that in the last uh, couple of uh, months, China and America have been engaged in bilateral trade negotiations for two, three, four times. But... Uh, it felt, and the Chinese uh, believed that uh, uh, Mr. Trump is not, not predictable. And uh, uh, last time in mm. May, uh, pre uh, Vice Premier Liu He from China was in D.C. I was over there, and there were uh, a lot of discussions and finally uh, reconciliations. But uh, immediately uh, when Mr. Liu He returned back to Beijing, uh, Mr. Trump seems to have uh, changed mm. his mind. And I think now China believed only after a few rounds of uh, uh, tariff and retaliation from each other, and maybe uh, the, the opportunity will only come for negotiations. And we uh, hear that uh, uh, Chinese Vice uh, President uh, uh, Wang Qishan was planning to visit Washington, D.C. Uh, by the end of last month, but he didn't go. That shows that China is not believing. Yeah. Uh, his visit may help to seal any kind of understanding. So maybe after only a couple of uh, weeks later, when uh, the two countries realize that mm. they will be both damaged, so maybe the real opportunity will only come. Okay, uh, well, currently that doesn't seem to be uh, the possibility of a pullback, uh, but uh, uh, Harsh, let me ask you this. You know, we've already seen uh, uh, China moving on things like soybean, which hurts Trump country, uh, essentially. Uh, what do you believe are now the points of leverage that the U.S. may want to exercise and China would like to exercise as well? 
Well, I think that the larger uh, issue that both the U.S. and China face is that who is going to hurt more. And in that, in that context, uh, you know, the Chinese have actually leveraged their first round of retaliation pretty effectively by targeting uh, issue, you know, uh, commodities like soya, soya or, or the uh, pork, uh, etc., which actually are targeted the Rust Belt, which mm. is the sort of heartland of Mr. Trump and uh, where, where, he, where he gets uh, most of his votes. So in that sense, the argument from the Chinese side seems to be that if they can increase the threshold of pain for Mr. Trump uh, politically, only then will yeah. he realize that uh, somehow he should he needs to take a break and he he, he needs to back down. So I think uh, there they have targeted and they mm. have they've have, they have tried to leverage that that aspect very categorically. The other I think what we have seen from uh, from the American side is largely uh, the argument that look the relationship is so big that and and the and the uh, threshold of pain for uh, for the Chinese side given that China already faces uh, economic negative headwinds potentially can uh, make a case to yeah. the Chinese that look if you do not uh, take our concerns seriously then perhaps mm. greater damage may come and that is the message that the Americans have been trying to send uh, I think uh, the the larger reality seems to be that the Chinese are reading it more to the political economy angle where the argument seems to be that ultimately this is yeah. about making slowing down China which is largely a political argument mm. that you want to make China uh, subservient to America and this is something that you hear from the Chinese analysts and therefore for, for Mr. Xi Jinping right. backing down is not an option so he will stand up as resolutely yeah. as possible perhaps after the next round of retaliation right. there can be some sort of an agreement between the two where the two where they, where they try to face their save try to save the face uh, when yeah when if uh, backing down as Harsh is pointing out is not an option as far as Xi Jinping is concerned uh, you know what can we then expect also by way of non-tariff intervention on the part of China Obviously, he has uh, leverage, less leverage uh, upon U.S., I think, uh, because we are exporting much less. Uh, we are exporting much more than U.S. Uh, on trade. So, but uh, China has many other options, uh, including this uh, uh, currency issue and also uh, the, the very huge uh, uh, fund we are buying from America, but those options, in my opinion, are all bad options. It is bad for China, it is worse. Mm. It is bad for America, it is also very bad for uh, China. So, But China cannot pull back at this moment. So China has to go ahead and China has to uh, encourage uh, many other countries, including India, European countries, Japan, because they are having the same difficulty from the yeah. United States. So, so I think after uh, a few uh, rounds of uh, uh, retaliations and U.S. will face uh, different challenges mm. from different countries. So then maybe the real uh, chance will come. Uh, you know, uh, how likely is it, Harshan, I'll end with that question, that this will in fact bring India and China closer together? Yes, we have already seen uh, China and India. We are, uh, uh, we are engaging high-level uh, kind of discussions on and uh, trade and even China is uh, trying to lower tariffs of the soybean and other agricultural products from uh, yeah. India and we are trying to also push uh, forward this uh, RCEP that is regional comprehensive economic partnership to uh, the end, of, uh, to the end. Yeah. and we, we can finally achieve that within this year and I think China and India will benefit from this kind of bilateral cooperation and uh, multilateral cooperations in this process. Okay. Harsh, a quick word from you on that before we close. Well, I think uh, we have seen how Mr. Modi's reset with, uh, with, the, with the Chinese leadership has started. And I think it, it largely started because the recognition that the headwinds uh, that we are facing from Mr. Trump it can be very un unpredictable and can take us into, into territory that we have not experienced for the last two decades. So I think both China and India have a, a singular agenda at this point to somehow manage this transition and manage this unpredictability. And I think both mm. will find much uh, that, has, that can be gained by working together. All right, Harsh and Ben, we'll have to leave it there. Appreciate you joining us here uh, to decode the latest in the battle between the U.S. and China uh, on the trade front. Uh, thanks very much, gentlemen, for joining us here this evening. We'll take a break. There's a lot more coming up. Don't go anywhere.